just waiting for a minute before we start. Okay, we'll begin. <coughs> okay, this is going to be a dreams tutorial. <coughs> Basically, it's a tutorial on basic platforms and how to make basic platforms that will function and move. <coughs> okay, so to start with, we're going to go into what we've created here, which is a quick setup design for platforms. Okay. We have our little character in the middle. He's going to kind of demonstrate how platforms work. <coughs> so to begin with, we're going to start with the basics. Here we have a setup that has an area of land in the center <coughs> and an area of land around the outside. So the platforms will get you from the middle section over to this section. Now we've included this bar at the top and the function of this bar is so we can connect up our bolts and various bits and pieces for the platforms. So to start off with, we're going to start with this platform here and we're going to do a pendulum platform. So what we want to do is, <coughs> first thing we do is turn on the grid. <coughs> so we go to show hide, or sorry, we go to this one here, guides, and we're going to select the grid. And basically the reason we put the grid on is because everything will be straight when the grid is on, when we're moving things. So the first platform, as I said, is going to be a pendulum platform. So you have this area where we're going from and this area where we're going to go to. Now to move the platform, we just simply grab it and slip, bring it into place. Uh, why is that grid not on? Oh, it is on. Okay. Okay. Right. Now the way I do this is I don't like to have the platform where it's above both sides just because it's it's easier for animating it so it's not going to collide with the either side. <coughs> right, so the first thing we do is we're going to go to the settings on the platform, tweak it with uh, L1 and square and we go to this option here. And we want to make sure it's movable. In other words, it's affected by gravity. Because if we turn that off, the platform is just going to hover in the air when we start time, as you can see here. Okay, so now we go back onto it, tweak it again, go back on and change it to be mo to be movable because we want the platform to move freely. Now we're going to go to our gadgets at the top by pressing the square and going to gadgets here, and we're going to go all the way across to connectors. This one here, connectors. Click X on it to open it up, and we're going to select a normal bolt. Now the difference between a, a normal bolt and a motor bolt is the fact the motor bolt will drive itself, will spin around, whereas the normal bolt is just affected by gravity. So we're going to press X to select it. Now it's important to notice that you want to kind of turn the platform around to see where we are in relation to the center of it. So when we connect a bolt up, we're going to connect the first end, which is the yellow end. That is connected to something that's stable and not moving. So that beam on the top isn't going to be moving. And then we want to connect the other end to the center of our platform, which is going to be connected to the movable end. So if we zoom in a bit, we can see this closer. So that's basically hooked up to work. We'll just have to check it now. Okay. So as it stands at the moment, if we go to the very middle of it, where they have the, the actual, the connector itself, and press L1 and square to tweak it, it will show us basically all the settings for this particular connection. Now at the moment you can see there's a circle going around like this which is showing you the angle that that bolt will spin. So this bolt will really spin on this axis here. So we want to change that and what we do is 
we're gonna we're gonna have our, our uh, we're gonna have our platform swing this way so what you do is grab L or L2 on this or sorry R2 sorry I'll eventually get it right L1 on this Sorry, L or sorry, R2. What is that? That's kind of hold on a second. Sorry about this. Oh, sorry. It's because the because I still had the bolt selected. So press circle to get off the actual place in the bolts, like so. Back on the normal pound pointer. Then you go over this and press L2 to grab it. And you notice it's on the grid, but because it's yellow like that, it means it's not lined up to the original grid. So we have to press the triangle. And it will line everything up to the actual basic grid and you can see the angle it's at now we're going to change the angle so it's going to be this way so you can see the way this this circle is means the actual line so if we were to actually move this platform it'll swing around on this axis but we don't want it to swing completely around we want to have a limit where it'll only swing a certain degree so I'm putting on this one here use limits and you'll get this basically this is a, a radius for where it will spin so what we do is l2 sorry r2 and we can actually use it we can drag it sorry i'll say that again l2 we can actually rotate it by using the right stick left and right we want to go to this angle so when it's at this angle that means it's only going to swing between these two points so back and forward like this and the blue one in the middle here, this blue pointer, that's showing you the current position of the platform. Or the current angle the platform is at, should I say. So an example to see this working is, if we unpause the game, and if we grab it with R2, and let it go, it'll swing on this particular axis. Now that's lovely and it'll keep swinging there for ages. But what we want to do is, we want to have it swing less far if you know what I mean so what we do is press L3 to reset the, the level okay if it goes over there we want this one so now we're going to just simply make the angle smaller we do that by decreasing the angle limit by holding X on it dragging it now what's going to happen is it's not going to swing as far so now if we pause if we unpause it we can start it swinging and you can see the actual angle it'll it'll be less if you like so now when the character jumps on this it'll basically start swinging him so if to test this out I'm going to go to modes test mode doing this way lets you test the and lets you play the level in test mode where you can see you can see all the logic and how it affects things click on this one and now click on our player our little character you can jump on the platform very carefully and it'll basically move with him it's basically just going to swing on that radius and it does that because we have the limit and I'll show you that now reset again you always reset by pressing L3 you have to be out you have to unpossess the imp and reset every L, all the platforms to the initial state it was when you loaded the level up we don't really want that there we want that L1 and circle will get you off back into the editing mode straighten it up okay so that's one set so that's that platform there now if there's any questions by all means just text in the description and I'll answer them for you so that's one kind of kind of joint we can do or one kind of bolt we can do if you like that will make that swing we can also do another one which will rotate it so this is basically going to be rather than it swinging it's going to rotate around in a circle so how we do that is first of all we'll position our plank here this this piece make sure our grid is on guides grid is on that's great actually going to make the grid smaller or the grid make the grid bigger okay so we're going to move that in place again it's not lined up with the the initial grid so things will be off if you don't line them up so when you do that hold down l2 and press triangle it will line it up to the grid so now it's in the same grid as there as the rest of the level so we spin it it'll go around what we're going to do is we're going to have it spin on the on the 
we're going to have it spin on the spot. So what we'll do is go into gadgets. We're going to go to a motor bolt. And we're going to connect this up. So again, the end that's not moving is going to be connected up to this, like so. You're going to bring this down, connect to the middle of the platform, or close enough to the middle. Oh, that's not quite straight. We can just adjust it. If you want to adjust it on the platform, just simply press circle to get rid of the to get rid of the actual selection that we've made, like picking the bolt, and then we can just grab it, hold down R2, reposition it, like so. And now when you grab the bolt, you'll notice it's not aligned with the grid. Press the triangle, and it will keep it straight. Now this time around, you notice that if we tweak this, L1 and square, you'll notice the radius goes around in a circle, like so. We don't want it to do that. We want it to spin on the opposite axis. So all we do is, like we did last time, we're just going to grab it, and we're just going to turn it by holding L2 and turning it like this. And you can see now, this time around, unlike last time, we have a, a line that's spinning, and that's showing you that it's, that it's motorized and it's powered moving in that direction. If we were to change this one, cycles per minute, and lower it down, and it will make it go slower, or if we put it past down to zero here and go past it, I'll show you, we can make it go the opposite direction. Now the arrow won't show up if you're going the opposite direction for some strange reason, but that's just the way it's done. I think the arrow, I think the reason the line is there is to show you it's a forward motion. Okay, so what you can do is, you can let that spin around. So now what will happen is, when we start the game, every time you start in play mode, the actual uh, these bolts, joints if you like to call them, they actually don't appear. They're there but they're invisible and they don't they don't collide with anything. You could set them to collide here but we, there's no point to really do that. Okay? So now if you were to go to play mode you'll see how this works. I'll actually do it this way. Play. Now you'll notice the platform is spinning around on the spot. Which is very good if you want to do like a drawbridge, a long bridge that kind of you have to get across. So if you possess the character again, you can walk up to it. <laughs> and as you see, I just fell. <laughs> so it will spin around and you can, you can get off. Okay, so that's that. Now, if any questions, please, as I said, please ask, because if I'm explaining anything too fast, I'd be happy to help out. Our next platform we're going to do is going to be a raising platform, one that goes up and down. So you could basically go from here up to here using a platform. Now there's a number of ways to do it, but as we're using bolts, that's the way we're, we're just going to show you the bolted way to do it. So again, move the platform out to the middle, like so. Hold L2 on it to put it onto the grid, so it's lined up with the grid. And then we're going to select another bolt, which is called a piston. So we go over here, piston. And what a pist what a piston will do is it will raise up and down over a certain axis. So what we can do now is again line it up so it's kind of lined up straight. You might need to fiddle around and mess with this to get it exactly right. So we go into the bolt like so. I'm going to start again down there. Bring it up. Ooh, not quite. <laughs> okay. So you want to press circle. Grab this purple part and move it so it's lined up fairly straight. Again, if it's not straight, you just have to. It's just a matter of adjusting it. Now it doesn't have to be dead in the center because as long as the connection is straight, it will move in that direction. So what we could do is move this a bit more in. Right. Okay, so there we have it. In, we have our piston in place. Now if you were to tweak the piston, let me get rid of this one. If you were to tweak the piston by pressing L1 and square again, it's going to show you the range that the, this piston is going to go for from a minimum, from a minimum position to a maximum position. Now we want it to go up 
to, to, to get us to this platform. So what we're going to do is we're going to increase on this one here maximum length. As you can see the blue bar blue bar is basically the range from go from here to here. So we will basically increase this blue blue radius to get us up to the platform. Now the thing is this blue line here you have to remember it goes as far as this bolt so the platform will be slightly above it so if you see the way that's positioned now so we'd want to bring it down now we can either grab it by grabbing it like this which are uh, which are or two or you can change it on change it on these ones here now as you can see it's not completely straight but that's okay we can make it a bit straighter maybe close this for a second yeah they're straight now pretty straight <laughs> so what will happen now is if we have started going by starting time playing the platform is going to move up and down like so now you notice we have a problem straight away we only want the platform to go from here not from down there so press L3 to pause it put it back in its initial state and tweak this L1 and square and we're going to change the minimum the minimum radius so we increase this up like so even though the bolt is down here we're only going to have it move with this range of motion okay if we want to make it move slower we're going to lower down the cycles per second so we'll put it down to about 10 maybe now an interesting thing you can do if you want is instead of actually sliding this to get the number if you press L1 and square on it you can in input the number directly instead of having to actually go through the slider and it'll be on 10 so now if we start it going you can see it's much slower and it's moving between those two angles <coughs> so that is two of the or that is two of the balls three of the balls set up we've got this one that rotates around that one that swings when the player touches off it and that one that moves up and down now the reason these are moving up and down and that is spinning is because they're motorized but this one over here it's like string it's basically won't move unless the player touches it and that's what the function of this bolt is so the player literally has to touch off that to swing it I will show you now we can go to this and go to test mode select it so literally the player has to touch off it to start it swinging which is grand if you need it for if you need it to do like like a rope like a puzzle that you could just jump across and the player gets on that if you can get on it <laughs> so again we have this here where if we stand on this up I might have to adjust the speed the puppet now the puppet is running at the moment so we don't I don't want him to run so I can turn that off right by going out of this and instead of selecting the way you press L1 and square on this to move a platform I want to tweak the puppet and you get a load of puppet options so here we have his walking speed and his running speed I have running speed turned off so he won't run I'm gonna lower this down to about 1.0 <coughs> and leave his jumping height is good enough or make 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 it a bit smaller and you can see in the background the puppet is actually doing it once the th once the level is playing it'll literally show you what that particular option is affecting the puppet or how it's affecting the puppet should i say so now when i possess the puppet you can see he moves a lot slower oops hold on not having much luck jumping today I made this little guy for the stream as well so he has to jump off oh. you get the idea <laughs> now the last one I want to do is I was going to use this one this one here but I'm not going to now because I'll just I'll just reuse this over here I'm gonna make I'm gonna show you how to make a platform that moves by the player coming near it <coughs> excuse me right so we go back to pausing the game now on the platform you notice I have a microchip this is basically just a blank microchip 
that can be selected in the options at the top down here literally just place one and when you place that onto an item I'll show you now I'll delete this I'm going to do it again I take a microchip from here it's floating around <coughs> I'm going to go I'm going to hold down L1 and move over an ob object now it's awkward to do because the grid is on so I'll turn off the grid <coughs> excuse me so I'm going to hold down L1 and basically when I hold down L1 and move it's going to snap the microchip to whatever object it's over in our case we want this to be the platform so we're going to press L1 then press X button while holding L1 and it'll stamp the microchip onto the, the platform so now everything that's on the microchip if I open it up with L1 and X to open the microchip and then you could shrink it down with the d-pad up and down so all the th any logic I put on this is actually related to that block so it's it's basically it's making that block affected by this logic so what we want to do is we want to have it where the player will impact this if you like will stand on this and when he stands on it it will raise up or down so to do that what we're going to do is we're going to use sensor we go into the logic now we just want it to be where I'm just thinking we just want it to be where the, when the player is touching off the top part of it then it will move if the player touches the side or the bottom it won't do anything so to do that we're going to use a trigger zone this one here and we, we don't place this on the microchip or we don't place this on the block we place it on the microchip it means we can fit more logic on to affect the block and now from that we want to get a let me think yeah, that's all we want for the moment so now how this will work is I'm going to open the logic on these things to show you right so I need to open the logic on this so that's everything that's affecting this is this piston if you like okay so now we want to get this piece of logic here to affect the piston so I want to take a wire from the output of the of the trigger zone and wire it into the speed of the platform so now you see it's at zero and when you move over it's showing you what the what what the effect will be so in other words it's going to be it's going to switch on this this tr it's going to switch on this piston and make it move when the player enters the trigger zone so to show you what i mean we're going to tweak the trigger zone here l1 and square and we'll bring up the options okay now this is a bit tricky to to not to learn but once you get it it's good <laughs> first off we have to set the this this kind of this area this kind of shaded area that's just appeared in green that's showing you the effect of the trigger zone so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the middle one here put it on square and if you grab hold l2 on this handle in the center you can basically move the the actual trigger zone around so we're going to shrink it down and put it here over the actual platform like so so we just want to spin around to make sure it's actually on the platform now the problem we have here is I will show you now in a second if we were to have the trigger zone as it is now when the player jumps into it he's going to trigger this zone okay but I will explain again in a minute but it's too high at the moment because what will happen is if the player jumps up here and if the player basically crosses this area platform is going to move and we don't want that we only want to do move when he's actually twitching off it. so what we can do is you notice we have these arrows that lets you shrink the actual trigger zone so we're going to make it quite small and you can do it both ways make it small that way and we also realize that if we were to bring this down now if the player touches the side of it it's going to trigger because the zone is still there so you want to make that even smaller we can shrink it by pressing by holding L or two and pressing down on the d-pad we're going to just place it just so it's enough for the player to touch off you don't want it to be you literally just want his feet to be touching it now i'll explain why he's flashing now in a minute okay so basically what's going to happen now is when the player enters this trigger zone it's going to activate 
Okay, so what we have to do now is let me close that down. Go back up to where the trigger zone is. Now from the output from the trigger zone, it's going into this. It's going into the speed of the connector. So it will start moving when the player jumps on the platform. Okay? Now a thing to note is, right, with platforms or blocks, right? If we if I close this for a second, okay, and I tweak the block, everything has labels. So you can label the block as object. And it will int and anything that the block interacts with that has if you like that's labeling this whole block as an as an object okay now i'll I'll actually explain it another way because it might be easier to understand close that the player has the same thing on it so if I tweak the player puppet logics or puppet tweaks l two once you highlight the player like so there's l two and square and it will bring you up a list of all the things the puppet can do. It can do different kind of movements. It can do lower limb movements. All these different kind of things, turning, arm movements. Okay. These are all other proceed. These are all for animation, but I thought it'd be another tutorial. Okay. So this is the one we want. Where is it? This, this here. Player label. So player as a label of friend, which means that any object that detects f this label friend will affect it will be affected in other words when the player okay when the player is labeled friend okay and if I have this trigger zone and it's looking for a label the last one here detection mode detect labels so obviously we, we want to only detect the player so I turn off all these other things so what this is happening is it's saying the trigger zone when the player enters this trigger zone here it looks for the label f this label friend which it finds the player has and that way the player can interact with this particular thing now everything has a label on it so these have labels or these can be labeled that can be labeled that can detect the player this can detect the player so what we're going to do is in a minute I'll show you right the trigger zone here okay on this trigger zone you have these things here detection mode hidden so when you make some you can make an object here invisible or visible and if you make it invisible it's hidden so if you click that on it would detect an object that's invisible but as you can see this is visible so we can leave it on the first one which is visible that one there would would detect both ways so you can click it on either of those two for the moment we'll just leave it on the first one and this is the same with collidable objects I'll explain that further in a second. Okay. So what it's going to do is again, it's going to detect the player because he has this friend label. It's going to detect that this block here, this um, trigger zone, is going to detect the friend label. And you can see because it's flashing, so it's showing you in green. That's what it, that's what this trigger zone is going to detect. So we possess the puppet to show you how it works. So when the player goes up to the platform, see where his feet are, and notice when his feet hit the, the trigger zone. Oops. Again, I have problems jumping. Oh, come on. I can do it. Now, see, it's moving because his feet, or the puppet himself, is touching off that. If I jump, it'll stop, because he's not actually inside the trigger zone. And you can just jump off. Of course, there's all, you can put other logic in to make it reset or make it do different things, but that's just an example of how the trigger zone actually works and how the labels, how the puppet's label works for detecting things. Now, if I will show you just the block here for an example. Okay, press the L1 and circle to get back out of that mode. Right? If I tweak this block here itself, you'll see this has the same. This has a label or a detection. So at the moment it's set to detect everything. So anything, I could place any block here or any object. Once it collides with that, it'll stop. But I could turn off all these different things. Okay, so as I said, I could just have friend. So another example of how that would work is if I was to, where's that other platform at? This platform here. 
If I was to turn this platform sideways, position it. Okay. Now, if I do, if I leave it as it is, it'll fall because it's actually being affected by gravity. If I tweak this, you can see here on this option, it's movable, which means that like it'll fall and just like gravity will affect it. But if I turn that off, wherever I place this block, it'll just stay there. So if I start playing now, like start the time playing with R3, it'll just start playing or it'll just stay where it is. And that's ideal for doing walls or things. So if I turn this sideways, hold down R2 and scroll, it, make it bigger with a uh, D-pad up and down. I can position that here like so. Now remember I said if that this has a label. I'm going to close all these down to, just to stop confusing. Okay, so I'm going to open up the tweak menu of this one, L1 and square. Move it over here. Open up the puppet one. And go to this this particular tab here. Friend. And on this one I'm going to go to collides with. And I'm going to turn on everything turn off everything. So what's going to happen is with this, right? Because collides with on this object here is friend and the label on the puppet is friend, he's going to collide with this and it's going to stop him moving, which I'll show you now. And you notice he can't walk through it. He just he's just stopping there. Okay. But if I was to turn off friend, it means that it's not it's this not label is no longer going to stop him. He's not he's no longer going to collide with this block. So if I go through that, he'll actually walk through the block. Okay. Again, if there's any questions, by all means text them to let me know. Okay, so that's basically that's that's how platforms work. And also how the collision the puppet the puppet or the block collision. See I can do it like this, watch, to show you another example. If I go over here, sorry, close this down. I'm gonna copy this. Rotate it with the L with R2 on the right stick. I can rotate the block around. Okay, place it there. And if I copy it up here, now if I tweak this block here, okay, right. I can name this if I want. I can name the sculpture. So you could name individual things. Like I could say that is block one. Not very fast at typing. <laughs> block one. This one here is block two. Okay, I want to close these down. Now, when I go over this and press L1 to, and square, it's going to be block block one. But that's really it doesn't affect anything too much. It's just so you can personally identify an object. So you could put a, make a pair of sunglasses and call it sunglasses. So then if you were editing it, it'd be easy for you to see something. Right, so what I want to show you with this is the collision. Okay. Now if I look at the label on these, they've no label. So this isn't labeled anything. Look at this one. I'm gonna I'm gonna change the colour of this just to make it easier to see the two of these. Now you're changing the colour of the shape, but it's it's also changing the colour of the the actual menu right okay so I'm gonna go to collides with on this one so this is this one is going to be collides at the moment nothing is highlighted okay so basically nothing can collide with this okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna label this ob as an object right so if I was to unpause that now watch what happens oh sorry now the reason they're not falling is because they're both on on this menu, the middle one here, or the this one. They're both off. They're both on non-movable, so they just basically hang in midair. Now put that on there. Sorry. Now when I press the D-pad to the left, it goes back a step, 
So it un undoes the last thing you've done. So that's movable now. I'm going to go to this one, the red one, and make this movable as well. So what will happen is the two of these will fall under gravity. Now what happened? The red one went, fell completely through the, the scenery. That is because all its collisions are turned off. So this is another block here with a label on it. And if I was to tweak this one, L1 and square, bring this menu up, you can see that if I click on th all these, or sorry, on label, apologize, there's no label on this block here. So that would have to have a label as well. So you could put anything on, but say for example, we put uh, scenery, okay? So this one here is going to be labeled scenery. So in order for that to, to collide with it, I would need to turn on scenery, or sorry, I would need to turn on, did I label that scenery? Sorry about this. Yeah, I label that one scenery. So I would have to have collides with scenery. Okay, so now if I unpause it, this will actually, the ground will actually stop that falling, like so. But now you notice the blue one goes through the red one because it's a simil similar thing. So the red one now has no labels, okay? No labels at all on it. And it has just scenery on. So it says collides with scenery, okay? But on this blue block, as you go to this one here, I'm going to close this, sorry. Right. So it collides with scenery, okay? So what, what, the, what we're going to do is we can put on a label on this one of scenery and it will collide with this block. But we can also put a different label on. So I could call this block here label of this block as missile. It's not a missile, it's just literally a label to give it a, to give it a title. And I put on collides with missile. Now basically this block, this red block is going to collide with this block and this block. So when I unpause it now this, they both basically collide because what's happening is the blue one here which is labelled as missile oh it's got two levels on okay. this one here the blue one here which is labelled as missile is colliding with this block and because it's set to detect it it will collide again if I turned off missile it would just go through the block and they shoot up in the air because I just put the label back on so I hope that kind of explains basics, the just very, very basics of how pl the platforms and collision. Again, see the way this area is here, this this area, this this region, if you like, this this valley. Uh, this would have a label as well, which is set to collide with everything. And because it collides with everything, the friend one here, the label that's on the puppet, it detects that. So obviously, when the puppet comes down there. If I possess the puppet, like so. Sorry. Okay. Like this. When the puppet falls off here, it's going to it's going to hit the wall. But because he has a label of player on him, and the wall is set to, de to detect, or sorry, because he has a label of friend on him, and the wall is set to detect the friend, he hits the wall. And also now, because all these labels are turned on. It means any object that has a label on it will also um, will also collide with the wall, as you can see. Oops. Okay, so reset everything. Delete that. Delete that. all the labels are turned on okay so if any questions you, by all means hold on I'm just going to check for one second in the chat let's see if anyone give me a message okay so that will be my tutorial on sculpting or on my sorry my tutorial on platforms very very basic tutorial on platforms again you can always message me on PSN and Sean88 if you want to know any details about making detailed platforms 
and I will be posting another video soon. So I hope that was useful to you and I explained things well enough. So take care and see you on the next tutorial.